Um, first of all, I just want to say that I appreciate to be a part of this event today as it's history here in Seneca Falls. Um, before we start, I wanted to open up with the words before all in Gaya Kono, Ganohenyo. So all I ask is to encourage that the men take off their hats and I'll get ready to start. Hendani <laughs> Nadi ne and what they wanna know need that when Honyo Saha went a day, but no ha that when Hunkwa, it took a ne of Tong and Guan Nigoha. And our ne had wa trowi, ne had ne on that saho wayan and that saho and dada. Ne gang you get to hoyan twang had the young groggy, then toto gang no and look what hound no. Ne gan ne got to gan ni yoga at the gang has shot from what do say. Nadi ne and what they wanna know need that when Honyo at when Grafno, it took a ne of Tong and Guan Nigoha. And our ne had wa trowi, send nigga ha when he on top. Nay gang over the going at, nay g sonda. Nay a noko trot, now he yoga don't sock. Nay on that, I say hens are gone. Nay the ne and what they were in on it at one horn yaw, send nigga ha when he on top. He took at me of tongue and guan nigga ha. And our ne had wa trowi, and told a yaw no ne, he nigga de shout the head on it. Nay gang over the going at, nay a wata. Nay total don't know, no could trot hound no. 
Okay, I just want to say once again that I appreciate to be a part of this event today as it's brought history here to the people of the women of the history of Seneca Falls. It's an honor to be here, to be able to speak here on behalf of the people of Gayakon. Um, we really, all the people appreciate it as well. The kids are coming up with the language. It's an honor to be home. We're home. Here along Cayuga Lake, it's an honor to be home. We're very rejoiceful. Okay, now I just want to also say that we're also going to sing a song in honor of the women from the past that brought history here to Seneca Falls. And also to honor the women now in the present. Hey, I we gonna we all yane. Oh, hey, now we 
saying once again that we appreciate to be a part of this event as it brought history here to the women of the past and in the present. We also want to extend our peace, compassion, strength, love, and ganiquio, good mind, and friendship to everybody here surrounding counties of Seneca and Cayuga along Cayuga Lake. Here along Cayuga Lake. So once again, I appreciate you guys and Nyawe. Uh, Thank you to Dylan Seneca for providing a traditional indigenous Thanksgiving address and song and to the dancers to start out our program and also to the Seneca Falls High School and Middle School Brass Ensemble for the pre-event music. So thank you. Good morning and thank you for joining us for the dedication of these four trailblazing women whose noble actions created a ripple effect that contributed to the women's rights movement and ultimately the passage of the 19th Amendment, giving women the right to vote. This progression of waves is why the artist, Jane Dedecker, who's with us today, named this piece Ripples of Change. I am Joelle Murney Karsten, board chair of the Seneca Falls Development Corporation, and I will be the MC for today's program. I would like to take this opportunity to recognize some dignitaries who are with us today. Uh, Seneca Falls Town Supervisor Mike Ferrara and members of the Town Council. <laughs> New York State Senator Pam Helming. <laughs> We're fortunate this morning to have retired New York State Senator Mike Nazolio with us, who <laughs> I would like to mention was instrumental in securing the funding for the adjacent statues in 1998 when Anthony met Stanton, and we also have that artist with us here today, Ted Ogg. <laughs> Director of the New York Canal Corporation, Brian Stratton. <laughs> Member of the Women's Suffrage Centennial Commission and President and CEO of the Harriet Tubman Home, Karen Hill. Chief Sachem Sam George. Chief Sachem William Chuck Jacobs. Lieutenant Governor of the State of New York, Brian Benjamin. And U.S. Senator Kirsten Gillibrand. Seneca Falls High School and Middle School Vocal Ensemble will sing the Star Spangled Banner.
Thank you for that wonderful performance. I would now like to welcome Karen Hill, member of the Women's Suffrage Centennial Commission, to introduce Senator Kirsten Gillibrand. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I am so pleased to be here and so honored to introduce our special guest. You know, we're all here because of the work of women and the work of the Women's Suffrage Centennial Commission that sponsored this incredible uh, Ripples of Change statue. We have an incredible United States Senator who does many things, but I'm going to just talk about what she did for the commission. The commission was well established into law, and I'm here to tell you 18 months later, nothing had happened in terms of people being appointed and the work of the commission beginning to ensue. And these were great concerns because the law also had a very specific sunsetting date and we had not even begun our work. And thanks be to God that we had a Kirsten Gillibrand who picked up the legacy from Barbara Mikulski who, with Senator uh, Capito and, and Senator Baldwin, who met and had these dinners, but Senator, our Senator, Senator Gillibrand, took the lead and did the grunt work with federal agencies, uh, with making sure that uh, commissioners were selected. And so that meant she had to interface constantly, and her staff was, at that time, Speaker Ryan's office, at that time, Leader McConnell's office, and at that time, our former president's office, President Trump's office. Now, that, that, that's a heavy thing to lift that up, to take that work on and make it happen. But it had to happen because we had the sunset date. And so with the same zest and zeal that she pursued dealing with uh, violence against women in the military and on our college campuses and so many incredible things to lift up women, Senator Gillibrand made this commission happen. And she championed, we started out with a budget of $2 million. She championed every year our getting an additional $1 million. That's why that statue is here today. And we ought not forget her. I would hope that I live long enough to see a statue of Senator Gillibrand. <laughs> her, you know, her work is not done. God is not through with her yet. But let me get out of the way so you can hear Senator Kirsten Gillibrand. Blessings to Karen Hill for her introduction and her leadership. She is somebody who um, understood the importance of this movement, uh, not only being the executive director and president of the Harriet Tubman Foundation, but uh, having herself and her knowledge base and steeped in history. She's somebody who was perfect for this commission. So thank you, Karen, for accepting my appointment and Senator Schumer's appointment to be in the commission. And I do want to recognize Anna Lehman, our executive director of the commission. Thank you for taking on that challenge. Um, and I do want to thank the Onondaga leader. Um, the fact that we had Neil Paulus here and the beautiful dance we saw and the beautiful song, uh, it really does um, signify how important this moment is and this recognition is in terms of unity and in terms of telling the full story. Uh, thank you, Joelle, for the work you do for the Seneca Development Corps, as well as um, uh, Menzo Case, the president of Generations Bank, for hosting this today. I really do appreciate. And then we, for our dignitaries, our Lieutenant Governor Brian Benjamin, State Senator Pam Helming, Brian Stratton from the New York Canal Corps, all of you make a difference every day in our community and in our government, so I appreciate it. So this has been a long-standing vision of mine, and I'm really so excited to see it come to fruition. Uh, being here in Seneca Falls is like being part of history. It's like being part of our nation's story and our nation's civil rights movements. This was the place of birth for the women's suffrage movement. And it is appropriate that it should be the place for the dedication of the Ripples of Change statues. 
The women of the Senate fought to create the Women's Suffrage Centennial Commission so that we could have a group of dedicated professionals and visionaries to think about how do we commemorate 100 years of our struggle for suffrage, as well as tell the story for children and students all across the country about why the struggle and the fight for the right to vote is so fundamental to this American democracy and to our shared history. Making sure that the anniversary of the passage of the 19th Amendment didn't pass without that national conversation, without that moment of understanding and absorption of those who came before us and the fights that they fought and the ones that they failed and the ones that they won. It really matters to understand those stories. The Ripples of Change statues celebrate four, only four, but four of the incredible, brave, bold women who dared to imagine a more inclusive, just nation and were willing to fight every step of the way for that to become a reality. Today, every woman who votes, every woman who serves in office, every woman who chooses to lead a company or raise a family, those women we are celebrating because every generation stands on the shoulders of the generation before them. No one generation can succeed without the sacrifices and successes of the generation that precedes them. So these women, Harriet Tubman, one of my favorite New Yorkers of all time, she is an American without parallel. She is well known for being the Moses of her generation because she not only escaped from being enslaved, but then she made sure her families, her loved ones, her community also could be free. She went back over and over and over again to save hundreds of formerly enslaved individuals to bring them to freedom. People don't know this about her, but her other nickname was the General. Because at any time during their trek on the Underground Railroad, if anyone ever said, no, I cannot go further, she would take out her pistol and say, yes, you can. <laughs> and she made sure that she never lost one passenger. Sojourner Truth and another extraordinary woman, I think one of the first to understand intersectionality, the intersection between being a woman and being a black woman and the challenges that uniquely created and still creates today. She was born into slavery as Isabella Bomfrey. When she was just a little younger than me, she decided to change her name. She wanted to give herself a name that reflected who she is and who she was to be in our history. She decided to name herself Sojourner Truth. Sojourner because she was going to travel very far and truth because it was at the heart of who she was. She was a deeply faith-driven woman and knew that the truth would set us free. She famously said, I will shake every place I go. And she certainly did. She was the first black woman to successfully sue a white man, her former, or it wasn't her former owner, but a man who purchased her son. She wanted her son's freedom and she successfully sued him in court. She was a woman who knew her value and she owned her voice. Our next woman, Laura Cornelius Kellogg, is an Oneida leader. She knew the power of the women's vote a right that Native women had had, quote, as far back as history traces. She used her skills as an order, as an organizer, as an activist, to fight not just for Native women's suffrage, but for the suffrage of all women. And last is Martha Coffin Wright, who not only supported Harriet Tubman's work on the Underground Railroad by being a host for the Underground Railroad in her, home, in her home in Auburn. She also helped to plan and lead the first women's rights convention here in Seneca Falls. I think she represents the best definition of what an ally should be. 
to fight for her rights, but also her sister's rights, and to never lose sight of the importance of her voice in her sister's fight. She spent decades traveling to campaign for causes of women's rights and the abolition of slavery, and led the movement in her local community for the abolition of slavery. These women recognize that our rights, our freedoms, and our future are fundamentally bound together. They knew that none of us could truly succeed until all of us could succeed. They understood the fundamental truth that a country where you could not vote was a country where you had no voice and no chance of equality. So they fought for universal suffrage, knowing that the only way to form a more perfect union was to form a more inclusive one first. As we know, the fight for women's suffrage was far from over in 1920. Native Americans and women of color had to continue fighting until the 1960s, until they won their right to act, actually exercise that right to vote. It is so deeply significant that these statues highlight the role of women of color in the suffrage movement. These, made, these women made the movement much larger, stronger, and more powerful. They also became role models for the next generation of women suffragists who stood in their footsteps. They will continue to serve as an inspiration for all of us to keep supporting and fighting alongside women of color who continue to lead the charge against today's challenges. Voter suppression, tactics designed to keep people of color from the ballot box, I can't think of a better monument to the history and spirit of New York than these fiercely determined women. I know that this monument to their courage and commitment and their fight for inclusivity and equality will keep their stories alive and inspire New Yorkers for many generations to come. I can't thank the artist enough for her work to create this vision of these women. I can't thank the leaders here who fought to make sure this statue became, these statues became reality. And I can't thank all of you enough for being wise enough and thoughtful enough to come and celebrate these women. Thank you, Senator Gillibrand. It is truly a pleasure to be a recipient of such a historic and significant gift. And having you in attendance for the dedication today makes this a far more memorable occasion. At this time, I would like to welcome New York State's new Lieutenant Governor, Brian Benjamin. Good morning. First, I want to say on behalf of Governor Kathy Hochul, fall is here. Uh, for anyone who still, still thought this was the summer, uh, think twice. But no, let me just first of all say um, thank you to the Women's Suffrage Centennial Commission, the Town of Seneca Falls, Seneca Falls Development Corporation, our Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, and everyone who was part of making today happen. You know, it is not lost to me. I was sitting now listening to our Senator uh, Kirsten Gillibrand. And it wasn't lost on me that if you look at New York State, a state that we pride for being sort of forward-facing and, and moving in the right direction, that we are now at a place where we are able to have a U.S. Senator Kirsten Gillibrand and a U.S. Attorney, I'm sorry, New York State Attorney General, don't get me in trouble, uh, um, uh, Tish James, Letitia James, and the first female governor in the history of New York, Kathy Hochul. This is... This is a part of the ripples of change, right? Uh, and I really um, respect how you made this stat, this statue, the statue broader than what actually physically happened in Seneca Falls. You made it about how women across the spectrum, including many of whom who have been left out of the story making sure that they're included, making sure that those voices are heard. 
Uh, that is something that we should all be proud of. Because, you know, I can tell you growing up, you know, I, I was born in Harlem, grew up in Harlem, Brooklyn, and Queens. Sojourner Truth and Harriet Tubman, I know like the back of my hand. Because if it wasn't the school was named after them, uh, you know, we don't have statues. These were people who I saw all the time and were part of who I knew myself to be. But I think it's equally important that a kid growing up in the South Bronx or Harlem or Manhattan or Seneca Falls knows about the rich diversity of everyone who was a part of our history. I was really honored to learn more about Martha Coffin Wright. And one of the things that I found so interesting about her is that she refused to wear cotton. She actually, I think the sheep, there's a sheep next to her, and they, she actually refused to wear cotton, so the sheep was used to start the, a, a mill, where is where, which is where she got her clothes from. Like, you don't have to always be the person who is leading people out of a problem. You can be using your consumer power to help fight the things that you don't like. And that's something that today uh, many of us can, should, and must do. And so I think it's important that every kid knows every story that has helped to get us to where we are today. And I want to make sure that our young people here know that they, no matter what your race, your ethnicity, uh, your sexual orientation, whatever it is that you are, you are a valuable part of our community, you're a valuable part of our society, and these statues help to cement that. So I want to thank everyone for allowing me to say a few words, and please know Governor Kathy Hochul really wanted to be here. I mean, it is a hard thing when we're dealing with scheduling because somehow she sometimes thinks that she could be at five places at the same time. And it's like, Governor, you cannot be at five places at the same time. And I knew when you were Lieutenant Governor, you were, oh, but I got to help a little bit. So when you see her, Senator Gillibrand, please tell her that I'm not doing too bad <laughs> and that she can be okay uh, with not being at every part of the state at the same time. But listen, we have a great new Governor, Kathy Hochul. She's doing a phenomenal Phenomenal job. She is working hard <laughs> to make sure that every part of the state feels included, and that is what we need, and that's what we're doing here today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor Benjamin, for being with us today, and we look forward to seeing you a lot more in Seneca Falls. I would now like to welcome to the podium our representative in the New York State Senate, Senator Pam Helming. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Seneca Falls. I'm so thankful to have you all here today, and it has turned out to be an absolutely gorgeous day. I was thinking as I was watching the sky and wondering if we were going to get rain. The sky today reminds me about a lot about the fight for equality, right? There were dark times, challenging times. We didn't know if we were going to make it. Was the rain going to come or not? But on the horizon, there was always hope. There was always that blue sky. And that's what's coming our way, folks, this blue sky. Uh, Senator Gillibrand, I want to thank you so much for your your fight, your tenacity, everything you've done to help deliver this memorial here to Seneca Falls. Thank you so much. <laughs> to Lieutenant Governor Benjamin, Director Stanton, Stratton, our supervisor, Ferrara, your town council, I see many town councilors who are here today, Chairperson Joelle, Mernie Karsten, Joelle, thank you, Greg Zellers, the Seneca Falls Development Corporation, and of course, I cannot forget to recognize our former Senator Mike Nazolio, who's been so instrumental in everything that has happened here in Seneca Falls. Thank you. I also want to say thank you to our talented artist and sculptor, Jean, Jean De Decker the Women's Centennial Commission, Ganondigan, and the many organizations from Seneca Falls and Auburn who are part of the incredible team that made this possible. I also want to take a moment and thank Chief Pinstra and his team who are here. Thank you for your support as well today. I consider it 
a great honor and truly a great responsibility to be the first woman elected to represent the 54th district, the proud home of Seneca Falls and the birthplace of the women's rights movement. As the senator said earlier, I wouldn't be here today if it weren't for the brave women standing right here. Uh, there's no question, as I said, I would not be standing here today if it weren't for Harriet Tubman, known as the Moses of our people, and as I learned today, as the general. I absolutely love that. <laughs> Lieutenant Governor, she carried, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sojourner Truth, activist who was known as someone who liked to stir the pot. Laura Cornelius Kellogg, the first woman to accept the great message of peace. And of course, Martha Coffin Wright, considered a very dangerous woman by so many in her community. Or the fellow trailblazers that they joined at this site, as was pointed out earlier, Susan B. Anthony, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, and Amelia Bloomer. I've got to say that every time I'm here in Seneca Falls, I feel a tremendous source of pride. This pride stems from the private people who live here and who work here. Seneca Falls has long been a community that honors its place in history as it plans for its future. We've all heard the saying, in order to know where you're going, it's important to know where you've been. I believe that's a sentiment that's reflected here in the Ripples of Change Memorial. Change, as we all know, it's an action. It comes from inspiration, which is why I'm so happy to see so many of our youngest citizens here today. You, you folks, you are our future leaders. You are our hope and you are our inspiration. I'm a grandmother now to two beautiful grandchildren and it's very important for our young people to know these women, to understand our history and to be inspired to use their own voices and use your own talents to make a difference for others so they can keep the ripples of change going. I hope everyone here, but especially this message is for our young people, I hope you'll visit this memorial often. And I promise that as you do, you will be inspired by the strength, the courage, and the actions of these trailblazing women. And I hope that you will do everything in your power to carry forward their spirit and their mission while creating your own ripples of change. Again, Joelle, I want to thank you so much for this wonderful celebration today, and a special thank you to Menzo Case and Generations Bank for hosting this event. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Senator Helming, for being with us today. At this time, we do need to say goodbye to Senator Gillibrand, who has several other events to attend. But on behalf of Seneca Falls, we would like to thank you for this gift that will ensure that the stories of these four women will be told for generations to come. Thank you, Senator Gillibrand. It's pretty difficult to improve on the breathtaking view behind me overlooking the Seneca Cuga Canal, but we set out to do just that to welcome our new resident ladies. The New York Canal Corporation partnered with us to install the temporary fountain that is gracing the landscape for this special occasion. It also lights up at night in the suffragist movement colors of purple, gold, and white. Please welcome Brian Stratton, director of the New York Canal Corporation. Thank you very much, Joelle. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. On behalf of all of us at the Canal Corporation and our parent organization, the New York Power Authority, I'm honored to be here today and take part in this mon monumentous celebration. First, I would like to give my sincere thanks to Senator Gillibrand, to Lieutenant Governor Brian, 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 Benjamin. Welcome, Governor. We look forward to showing you all about the canal. Uh, to Karen Hill and the Women's Suffrage Centennial Commission, the Seneca Falls D Development Corporation, the town of Seneca Falls, for inviting me to speak and to join you in commemorating this historic and incredible installation. Women's suffrage is d deeply woven into the history of the Erie Canal which helped to carry progressive ideas and activism of the movement from villages 
cities and towns along its banks since opening nearly 200 years ago. At the Canal Corporation, we are committed to highlighting every aspect of this rich history of our network of canals. We know that this exhibit will offer New Yorkers and visitors from across the world a chance to see and recognize the intergenerational impact of those storied leaders and of the suffrage movement. Many of the 19th century's most influential social reform movements flourished along our canal's banks, especially here in Seneca Falls and along the Cayuga Seneca Canal. As the stewards of these historic waterways, these statues sit as a reminder of our shared commitment to build a vision of a more inclusive state and of those who guided us down our path to a more just New York for all. Working hand in hand with Governor Kathy Hochul and Lieutenant Governor Benjamin, the Canal Corporation will continue to work to ensure that the vibrant history of these impactful and trailblazing social movements is held up for all those who visit our canals to see and to preserve that history for generations to come. Con congratulations and thank you very much. Thank you, Director Stratton. This next speaker is one of those people who you start to work with, you grow very fond of and consider a friend, and therefore you're very sad when the project ends. We thoroughly enjoyed working with and getting to know this extraordinary woman and her team. Please welcome Anna Lehman, the Executive Director of the Women's Suffrage Centennial Commission. happy to be here. You have probably seen me tear up several times um, while you all were singing, while you gave that beautiful um, prayer of Thanksgiving. Um, this is such a special day, and I'm so honored to be here to speak to you. Um, there are several people I can't look at anymore, so, this, so several of you I'm not going to make eye contact with um, because you're crying and, and it'll send me over the edge. Um, so, hi everyone, my name is Anna Lehman. I uh, was formerly the executive director of the Women's Suffrage Centennial Commission, which, as you've heard, was an organization created by Congress back in 2019 to lead the commemoration of the 100-year anniversary of the 19th Amendment and women's right to vote. And so, I, I wanna tell you how this statue came to be. Um, so many of you here are from Seneca Falls. This is your home. Um, and maybe this feels, you walk through this town and what it is and what it represents feels normal to you. Um, but to me, this is one of the most special places um, on earth. Five or six years ago, I came here on what I would absolutely describe as a pilgrimage. And I cared so deeply about women's history. It was, it, it is something that has been a passion of mine for a long time. And I knew I wanted to come to Seneca Falls, the birthplace of the women's suffrage movement. And so five or six years ago, I came here and I walked through the town and I have never been in a place where women's stories are so elevated, are so uplifted, where you walk through the town and you don't even mean to, but you come across a statue of women right, which tells this story of this momentous turning point in women's history, right, this beautiful statue that you created. And I have never felt a feeling like I felt when I walked through here. I, probably many of you know this, but in the United States, only 8% of monuments, memorials, and statues 
tell women's stories. Only 8% of public monuments, memorials, and statues represent women and women's histories. This place is so special. And when I became the executive director of the Women's Suffrage Centennial Commission and I sat with my staff and we looked at each other and we said, what do we want to do? What legacy do we want to leave? How do we honor these women who stood so tall for us? How do we stand tall for them? And I looked at my team and I said, you know what I want to do? I want to put a statue in Seneca Falls. And they looked at me and they said, let's do it. And we called the town, right? We called the National Park here, the Women's Rights National Historic Park, this beautiful place, this beautiful place that preserves and tells women's stories. And we called that park and we said, we want to come to the town. And they said, we've got your back and we'll make it happen. And this town and the people here, you wrapped your arms around us and you wrapped your arms around this project. And Jane, you say it, statues are a team sport and holy cow, was this a team sport, right? And I remember the day that I looked at my team and I said, I wanna put a statue in Seneca Falls. I wanna be a part of the story that's there. I wanna add to it. I wanna contribute to this place that's decided that women's history has value, it has meaning, and that representing women's stories is something worthy. It's worthy to do. And I wanted to be a part of that. And I wanted the Suffrage Commission to be a part of that. And I'm so proud. I can't look at you. I can't look at you. I'm so proud to be here today with you to celebrate this, to celebrate this statue and what it means and what it represents to every young woman, to every girl like me who comes to Seneca Falls and for the first time in her life feels like she sees herself. <sighs> okay, so. And, um, so I have some thank yous. So if you will indulge me for just a moment. Just a thank you. So I have some thank yous. Um, I have many and I'm just gonna try to, to run through them, but, but there are so many people. Um, first off, I have to thank the Seneca Falls Development Corps and the town of Seneca Falls for their partnership and their support, and especially Joelle and Greg. Um, you were the champions of this project. You were the champions we needed, and it's because of your commitment, um, Joelle and Greg especially, that we're here today, so thank you. Um, to every member of the working group. So what we did when we decided to do this project is we called the National Park here and we said, we wanna do this. And together we built a working group and we brought in experts, we brought in folks from this community, anybody who wanted to lend their time and their expertise and their voice to this project, we brought together. And those folks worked with us for a year and we met half a dozen times at least and they took their time and they gave us their expertise and we are so thankful so to every member of those working groups thank you thank you so much um, to michelle shenandoah neil paulus and diane shenandoah you brought so much beauty to this project thank you it was an honor To our site architect, uh, James Fructal, and to Minzo Case from Generations Bank, you both went above and beyond. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Senator Gillibrand, um, I'm going to say this even though she's not here because I'm sure she's in her car live streaming this uh, as she heads to her next event. Um, to Senator Gillibrand, um, she is a champion for women and a warrior for change, and it was an honor. Um, to share this experience with her. Absolutely. I'm almost done with the thank yous. Thank you for letting me go through this. Um, to my team at the Women's Suffrage Centennial Commission, you are the legacy of these four women. Um, you shined your brilliant light on this project. I'm sorry. It's, this just means so much. Um, you shined your brilliant light on this project. And when I turned to you and I said, let's put a statue in Seneca Falls, 
you just looked at me and you said, let's get started. And we did. Um, and working with you was the privilege of my crew. Um, and lastly, Jane Dedecker, to the artist um, of, this, of this beautiful sculpture, I called you with nothing more than an idea. I said, I want to put a statue in Seneca Falls. Does that sound like fun to you? Uh, you said yes, and you joined us on this journey. Um, and you created something that is infused with power and with magic. Thank you. All right, I'm going to wrap it up. So Martha Coffinwright, who you see here seated, she was a suffragist and an abolitionist, and she was described by her neighbor in Auburn as a very dangerous woman because of her beliefs, right? Because of her beliefs in equality, she was a very dangerous woman. And so my last thank you is to these very dangerous women, Sojourner, Martha, Harriet, and Laura, for their courage, for their perseverance, for their hearts and for showing us what it is to fight for what is right. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. It's obvious you put your heart and soul into this project. When you view the statues up close, you will see an incredible amount of detail. But Laura Cornelius Kellogg's level of detail is simply amazing. Thanks to Diane and Michelle Shenandoah and Neil Paulus for working directly with the artist, Jane Dedecker, at her studio in Colorado to incorporate amazing intricacies into the statue. Please welcome Neil Paulus from the Indigenous Concepts Consulting. Put a couple lines on the wampum. <laughs> Me too. Um, you know, I'm scanning. Uh, my name is Neil Paulus. Uh, I'm uh, delivering this speech as my wife is out of town and unable to attend for some family issues going on. So these are her words. Uh, so I want to make sure I get it right. Uh, memorial memorializing a person in a statue is not customary for us. But as we look around in the town of Seneca Falls that pays tribute to women who started the suffrage movement, you see little to no representation of the women and people who inspired them to get up and fight for their liberation. Walk, walking among the people of the Haudenosaunee, the early suffragists saw a woman, a world where indigenous women were in their full authority and held absolute autonomy over their bodies, their minds, their children, their homes, and the land. They also saw women who held the highest position among their people, revered as life givers, and women who had the say in their governance as clan mothers, who have held the position of leaders of our people since time immemorial. Clan mothers select our Haudenosaunee Confederacy's chiefs who are the eyes and ears of our people and take their direction from our clan mothers and their respective clans. As depicted here in the purple and white wampum belt held in the hands of Laura Cornelius Kellogg, she is displaying our representation of our women's authority to select and depose leaders and unlocking arms in sisterhood to uphold our nations. Laura was an Oneida woman who was born in Oneida, Wisconsin. She was an advocate for the Haudenosaunee Confederacy and the restoration of our land ownership and traditional ways. She served as an ambassador for all indigenous peoples across Turtle Island, spoke on behalf of indigenous peoples nationally and abroad, and was one of the first Haudenosaunee representatives to speak in front of the League of Nations to share the indigenous colonial governments imposed upon our people, the indignities colonial governments imposed upon our people, and the illegal taking of lands, children, and our cultural ways. 100 years later, Laura's words are the same words that our people continue to share with citizens here in the United States, Canada, and abroad. For having been so vocal, Laura was attacked and fraudulent claims were brought against her by both the United States and Canadian governments. 
These claims were proven baseless, but the scars of those attacks stayed with her reputation. She became another woman whose story was omitted in history because she spoke the truth and fought for the rights of her people. Today, we are proud to bring forward the story of Laura Cornelius Kellogg, and she may inspire a, that she may inspire a new generation of people to continue to find balance between teaching about the histories of the horrific acts of colonial governments and the inspirational survival of our culture, our agriculture, and ways of peace that will continue to uplift our Haudenosaunee nations and all people for generations to come. Every element on Laura's statue has significance, from the turtle at her feet with a land acknowledgement of the Gayakono Nation. Upon those lands we stand on today, and this monument will stand in the future. There are elements of our sacred tobacco, strawberries, corn, beans, squash, with her as well, as representations of our worldview encompassed in her beadwork. We wish to acknowledge the 25 Haudenosaunee Confederacy citizens who served on a special committee to select which Haudenosaunee women would come to be represented in this monument. The members include our chiefs, our clan mothers, academics, historians, ac active community members, and our youth. Artist Jane DeDecker shared the creation of Laura by inviting Oneida faith keeper and artist Diane Shenado to sculpt Laura's likeness and cultural elements. Diane relied upon the facial features of Onondaga Nation member Kyla Smoke, who's here today, to sculpt Laura's face. Diane could not be with us today, but she sends warmest greetings to you all and said she would, was very honored to be part of this historic event. As a member of the special committee, we would like to thank the Suffrage Congressional Committee, Anna Lehman, and artist Jane DeDecker for their genuine willingness to present the Haudenosaunee and our history, which challenges mainstream narratives that have been erased, that have erased our people from history. And now it's time to betray telling, truth telling alongside us. The goal we held in common was thinking about the future generations of Gayagono and Haudenosaunee youth. They're here today, right? How will they feel when they see Laura's statue? And does she help to tell the untold truth to all non-Indigenous peoples who encounter her? May her voice continue to speak as an advocate for our Haudenosaunee Confederacy, our people, and a deep appreciation and understanding that we shall always be present, present among these lands. Donate. Thank you so much for being with us today, Neil. Senator Kirsten Gillibrand called Karen Hill a champion for women's rights when supporting her appointment to the Women's Suffrage Centennial Commission. Ms. Hill is also the president and CEO of the Harriet Tubman Home in, in Auburn. Celebrating Harriet Tubman and Sojourner Truth, please welcome Karen Hill. to the park because it is an incredible space. It is not, uh, it's very typical of the space that Harriet was born from along the eastern shore of Maryland. So she really had a true love of the land and you'll see that when you come to the Tubman Park. I'm gonna speak about Harriet Tubman and Sojourner Truth. And you may ask why. And that is because they were both members of the Freedom Church. Well, the Freedom Church is the African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church. And I'll go back and forth between Tubman and Sojourner Truth. But Sojourner Truth actually changed her name from Isabella Bumphrey to Sojourner Truth at the altar of the Mother Church, which today is located, uh, Lieutenant Governor Benjamin, uh, on 137th Street in, in Harlem, USA. Okay. And what's interesting about Sojourner is if you read the narrative of her life, 
you become more acquainted with how familiar slavery was in New York State. And we often don't acknowledge that in New York State, but at one time, New York had as many slaves as Georgia and South Carolina. And so Jonah's story of being sold and sold again and her children being sold and sold again, all in this beautiful, beautiful state of New York, uh, you know, in Rifkin, in uh, Kingston, and the surrounding environments. What you also, uh, what everybody knows about Sojourner is her giving that speech extemporaneously at the Women's Rights Convention in 1851 in Akron, Ohio, and her saying, ain't I a woman? And if you read that, it is just an incredible telling of how most of us who are women feel about how we get discounted. We get discounted in our abilities. We get discounted in our multitasking. We get discounted in so many ways. And she just said, but look at me. What's also interesting about Sojourner is that speaking English was not her first language. So she incorporates what it was like to be a foreigner in New York, because Dutch was her language. Okay, that was her first language. So I just encourage everybody to go back and look at Sojourner's history and how she just made, you know, such a compelling argument for ain't I a woman? Doesn't that have value? And the statue, this statue here is an inclusive statue. And as a member of the commission, now understand this, um, Anna Lehman and her team did a great job, but they worked for the commission. The commission had its opinions, many, I don't need this, many and varied. And Anna was really good at keeping us together, but at the same time she heard that there needed to be stories to be told. So this is an important work of the commission to have an inclusive statue. And I also have to say about the work of the commission, we were affected by COVID and could not do so many of the things that we wanted to do. So uh, I have already t reached out in my former commission capacity to say, let us commit to focusing on what we do with the next 100 years. And I'm gonna be bugging Anna and her team at, a, what is it, America 250? To really make sure that that is a part of what you all look at, what we do as, what we do in the next 100 years as women. Now let me get to my beloved Harriet. Oh my God, what can you say? <laughs> What, now you had Sojourner who's like six feet tall and you had Harry who's like barely 4'11". What can you say about Harriet being the same giant of a woman? Her commitment, I don't know, don't know what's happening here. Her commitment to, okay, this way, okay. Somebody who's smarter than myself. Her commitment to family, her commitment to the pure value of freedom is what led her here. And her commitment, so much like Sojourners and so much like three of the four women depicted here, was to champion suffrage knowing full well that that suffrage would not be extended to them. That is amazing to go out and be a fierce advocate for social change, for things that need to happen, knowing that you're not gonna be included in that. And Harriet was a landowner. And then before this uh, suffrage bill was passed, New York State two years prior had passed it, but she knew it would not include her. It would take to 1965, quite frankly, for suffrage to be extended to African Americans in its fullness. And you all know we are dealing with that right now, today. But Tubman was able to go into the lecture halls where Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth Cady Stanton could not go into and talk about suffrage because black men would have their rights 
taking from them as a part of the consequence. This was the trade-off. As suffrage was extended to women, state by state repealed suffrage being extended to black men. And only Tubman could really thread that needle. And that's being a true servant leader when you are able to champion something that may not happen in your lifetime, but you know is for the betterment of America. You know that that's a part of the promise of America. And what Harriet Tubman and Sojourner Truth had foundationally, quite frankly, and it makes some people feel uncomfortable, but they had incredible faith. They had incredible faith that even when no one else sees you, God sees you. And you've got to be willing to do that work because God sees you and your faith will carry you through. This is, Seneca Falls is such a sacred place. Uh, I would often say, you've got to come to Auburn, you've got to come to Seneca Falls. That was my mantra in the commission meeting. I never let a commission, you can go back and check the record. I never let a commission meeting begin or open or close without saying, when are we going to Seneca Falls? When are you coming to Auburn? We would love to host you, we would love to host you. Everybody who lives in this area needs to lift it up every day because our country needs Seneca Falls and all of its stories. Thank you, Karen. Our final speaker represents Generations Bank, who graciously is hosting today's event, as well as the temporary location of the Ripples of Change statues until their permanent home is ready in People's Park across from the National Women's Hall of Fame. Please welcome Menzo Case, President and CEO of Generations Bank. people up here I'm just saying you know I feel like uh, Frank Sinatra taking up the microphone well thank you so much for attending the ripple of change dedication uh, commemorative statues such as these are needed to remind us of the people and the events that have taken place to form and refine the American ideal I'm particularly proud to be a part of this and certainly generations is is um, more than happy to do this. These statues commemorate the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment. We have more on the horizon. In 2023, Seneca Falls will celebrate the 175th anniversary of the 1848 Women's Rights Convention, continuing to celebrate all those who made it possible for the 19th Amendment passage. I would be remiss if I didn't thank Generations Board of uh, Directors for their support in hosting the Ripples of Change statues here while their permanent site is developed. Personally, I think Anna's a little off. She's got one statue in mind. I'd like to see uh, 300 statues lining our streets in Seneca Falls, facing, yes, absolutely, the place where it all started, the, the chapel right on Fall Street. I'm kind of disappointed that when I came to Seneca Falls, there were only four women's statues on the streets. One's been taken down and there are three there, and I'm so glad that now we have seven, but we're a far long way from having all that should be here, Anna. And I would welcome you back to, with the commission in uh, 2023 to get a couple more up. That's just my thinking. This is one of many sites here in Seneca Falls that celebrate women's rights. I want to uh, certainly invite you to go over to the National Women's Hall of Fame at the historic Seneca Falls Knitting Mill. You'll get to see a, a replica of the justice bell that was rung to celebrate the 19th Amendment's passage. And certainly the National Women's or the Women's Rights National Historic Park. We do have a ranger here, I see. I'm sure she could escort you down there and you could get a, a eye full of all the history there. And then if we just go down here to around the corner in Washington, we have Katie Stanton's house. 
So there's so much to do, so much to be done. Thank you so much for attending, and I, I'm, I'm done. That's it. Thank you so much. I am going to leave you with a quote from Harriet Tubman. Every great dream begins with a dreamer. Always remember you have within you the strength, the patience, and the passion to reach for the stars to change the world. Thank you for being with us today.